Nicholas coming so early really was unexpected. Um, and nothing really could have prepared us for that. And at the time, we had, we didn't have time to, to, um, to get ready. When you enter an NICO, um, the, one of the first things that you notice is the amount of tubes and wires and hooked up to these children. And then to see your own child with it. Ah, uh, that was it was tough to see that at first hand. Here you are, you are too early, you are a fetus, you are a well-adapted fetus who for whatever reason had to come out for some mismatch with the maternal womb environment. You know, something didn't work right. So here he is, he's an immature baby to be outside of the womb, but he isn't an inadequate full term. It's just such an inadequate environment to help him be his strong best fetus. And the best NICU is so primitive compared to the well-functioning womb, which is always to me like the most humbling <laughs> experience. So I developed a catalog to just stand there and read the language of the baby. What's the vocabulary? To read each individual infant. And from the background of having a list of behaviors, if you will. You know, it's primitive language. The syntax is missing. The vocabulary is kind of there. I try to infer what the infant is after, what the infant wants. And then, of course, the question is, well, what can the caregiving adult do about that, given that they want, want and have to keep this baby alive? Standing there day in, day out, and in the evening and at night, and observing this and this and the other baby, finally some nurses got interested, and the first nurse was Gretchen Lahan, and she said, what are you doing? You're here every night. What are you looking at? So I explained a little bit to her what I thought this baby might be telling us. And she said, oh, you mean he wants his hands free? We can do that. And I said, but he'll pull the tube out. The doctors told me he'll pull the tube out. And she said, if he's calm, you think he's calmer, he won't pull the tube out. And so she had courage. She and another nurse, Pat Linton, had great courage. And they started to put, put these babies on their sides and get their hands tucked up and support their legs into flexion and the babies were much more restful and breathed much more easily. But they learned very quickly this doesn't work for every baby. Every baby has their own thresholds of reactivity and their own sensitivities. Instead of making the, making the person fit to the environment, the environment is structured to bring out the best in the person. So the nurse manager, Rita Gibbis, she said, we have to develop this into a training approach and it needs a, a catchy name. <laughs> and I'm not one for catchy names. <laughs> and she said, well, what words have to be in there? And I said, well, individualized has to be in there and newborn has to be in there and behavioral has to be in there. And so she played around with these letters and she made the acronym NITCAP and, you know, we didn't like it much in the beginning, but it stuck. Clinical observations and rigorously performed research studies documented 
that this approach makes a difference. These children who were cared for with the NIDCAP approach showed improved outcomes. They showed improved outcomes in their medical stability. These children gained weight faster. They moved from assisted breathing to breathing on their own faster. They moved to breast and bottle feeding sooner. They were discharged to home sooner. There also improved outcomes in terms of their development and their behavior and their brain organizations. Premature infants who have been through the NIDCAP program have EEGs that are more mature and put together and their MRIs show better connectivity between regions. So it cuts down on disaster, medical disasters, it improves the, the, the financial situation, you're not in the hospital that long, and it improves behavior, it improves the EEG, which is completely objective, and, and same for the MRI, which is very objective. We believe that prematurely born children, when they're born early, when they put themselves in a different environment at a time that their brains are so actively organizing themselves, that they are on a different trajectory because they're a product of themselves and their experiences. And so it's not a catching up to full terms, they're, they're on their own path. It's very clear that NITCAP works, and it's very clear that this really should be implemented in all nurseries. NIDCAP is a way of viewing the world in, in a sense. It's affected a sea change in me, I think in all the people who work with it, in that you are given the luxury, the skills, to simultaneously watch a child someone caring for that child in an environment and your own role. There was just this aha moment when I said, you know, now I get it. I get what he's trying to tell me. When he's hungry and he's struggling too much, I need to I need to back off whatever my plan was for that feeding and figure out what his plan is, you know, what his capacity was, what his capability was. I think one of my favorite parts about doing NICAP work is working with the parents and the families. You know, they, they come into this experience, it's completely new to them, it's completely scary, and they're trying to deal with everything, and we're there to be able to support them and encourage them to be parents. They are the most important person in their baby's lives and they just sometimes need to remember that. You know, reading his cues, he was able to tell me when he was ready for the next step. And the next steps were usually very small steps, but that was okay. Um, it was just important that I was able and my husband was able to to understand what those next steps should be. Once you observe a child or an infant who is at risk and you become part of the interaction of that child with that family, you're touched by it and you're changed by it. As a neuropsychologist, I'm following these children and I see them now that they're eight years old and they're 10 years old and I've seen them again as they're entering their adulthood and I think that perhaps that we've had an opportunity to assist them in, the, in, in their life. Um, you can't not be changed by that. As a master NICAP trainer, I inform people about the big picture, that we are going to educate the financial officers in the hospital. We need to talk to administration. They need to have buy-in to the changes and the cultural change that's going to take place in their hospital. Initially when we brought NIDCAP into the unit, the nurses thought, wow, this is going to take so much time. And reading the baby's cues and working with the families, it was, it was going to actually detract from their job. And actually we found out that that's not true and that actually they have more time to spend with the families and getting to know the baby and knowing the baby's cues and how to um, best assist this baby to get through this process and grow. As a neonatologist, we're focusing on the medical problems that the baby has. And it's easy to get focused on those. And it is 
so helpful to be able to look at the whole baby as a person because that is the reason that people have children, is to have a person at the end. That's the point. The opportunity to bring the NIDCAP training program here to UCSF was uh, critical to our overall mission of improving neurodevelopmental care in uh, newborn infants. It's, um, we feel, the future direction of neonatology in general, and the NIDCAP program and developmental care are a critical piece uh, to achieve that goal. The collaboration um, happens as the, as the nurses are working with the families and learning about their baby. And what happens in a, a baby that's born early or has an unexpected problem, the family doesn't get that chance to bond. And then they come in and there's all this scary equipment and all these new things and bright lights and noises. And so the nurses work with the family and let them get to know their baby on their baby's terms. So NIDCAP has helped us to collaborate together to bring the parents and the baby back into center stage. We're still doing the medical care, but we're finding ways to make the parent-baby relationship important again. Everyone in the intensive care nursery, from um, the physicians to the social workers to the nurses to the physical therapists, are really happy to have NIDCAP be part of our overall care. And we really are looking forward to uh, continuing to grow with NIDCAP and to continue to work on improving all of the outcomes of the babies in the intensive care nursery. It's an ongoing process. It's every interaction, every baby, every family shows you a new little window and how the parent interacts with the baby teaches you how it could work. And once you see it, once you envision it, other people will do it. So we learn from each other and we gain confidence from the strengths of the family and the infant. It's just so poignant in the NICU. It's this universe in an encapsulated room you know, from the most sophisticated adults to the most sophisticated equipment to the tiniest, tiniest babies and families and all the hopes and expectations that families have for their child. It's all right, it's all right there, yeah. It's pretty incredible. It's, it's been a privilege.